Welcome back to Niagara Votes 2019. I'm Grant LaFleche from the St. Catharines Standard, and we're doing another in our series of chats with the candidates for the St. Catharines riding. And with us today is Liberal incumbent Chris Biddle. Chris, welcome to the St. Catharines Standard newsroom. Thank you so much. It's your first time here, I think? In the new newsroom. Yeah, not the old one that was a sort well, of Well, the a, old new one. A fire hazard. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. Um, just before we dive into some policy issues, uh, for the benefit of those who may not be so familiar with you, um, just tell us a little bit about who you are, you know, why you're running, why you're putting yourself through this yet again. Absolutely. Um, four years ago, I decided to put my name forward. I was a practicing lawyer in town for about a decade. Uh, but my uh, favorite job and the one they didn't pay me for was chair of Quest Community Health Center, which is a local uh, health organization in uh, Queenston Street. And I saw a side of St. Catharines that too many people ignore, uh, vulnerable people uh, being left behind and believed that too many politicians in Niagara were saying everything's going really well. Um, and so put my name forward, uh, one, and we hit the ground running in terms of fighting for affordable housing, fighting for the middle class, fighting for those working hard to join it. Um, and a couple other big things happened in my life um, in the preceding years with the birth of my son and daughter. Um, and though the environment was always an important issue for me, um, looking at it through their eyes as a three-year-old and a one-year-old and what type of future um, they're going to inherit is something that drives me forward uh, into this election and an important issue um, in, in uh, the upcoming election. Um, I want to get to both affordable housing and climate change because those are two of the sort of the really substantive policy questions. Um, but I have to ask this out the start because it, it's, it's part of what's happened in this campaign has been these questions about the integrity of, of the leaders for different reasons in, in each cases. Um, we know why the questions have been raised about uh, Mr. Trudeau because it was uh, the, the blackface incident that was uh, published some time ago. On that score alone, um, as a candidate, what do you say to voters who look at that and think, you know, we had placed all of this hope in this particular prime minister to be a certain way and represent a certain thing and now some of the, this behavior has come out, which has disappointed many people. Why should they come out and still support him and support the Liberal Party this time, uh, especially for those who feel like this is a betrayal or this is a, just a tremendous disappointment in what their, compared to what their expectations were when he was elected? Absolutely. And the Prime Minister acknowledged what he did was wrong immediately, apologized to Canadians because it was behavior uh, below their expectation, what they expected of their leader, even though uh, it happened uh, well in the past. Um, that being said, I, what I tell people is look at the actions of this government. And in terms of fighting for the most vulnerable, 825,000 fewer people living in poverty now than four years ago. Um, an anti-black racism strategy. Um, fighting for indigenous people and having an ambitious plan on reconciliation. Um, moving forward to ensure that Canada is a diverse nation and celebrates that diversity. And so we only have to look at the actions of this government and the Prime Minister to know that he believes, believes in that. And that's something that we'll continue to push forward. On the issue of climate change, uh, which you mentioned off the hop, uh, talking about your young, your young children and, and the future that, that they may have or, or not have, depending on, on what we do, um, it, there's a broad consensus by economists that gas taxes or carbon pricing is a very effective way to curb emissions. Um, but the caveat there is, that those that carbon pricing or those gas taxes have to be substantially high enough to alter consumer and uh, industry behavior. Emissions in this country continue to rise. Uh, in British Columbia, where they've had a gas tax uh, for a little bit longer, it's remained a bit flat. But we haven't seen this grand reduction in admissions, uh, emissions uh, as a result of, of carbon taxes, either at the provincial or the federal level. What has to be done then to make that carbon tax effective? Or do, do you think it's effective in reducing emissions? Do we need a higher carbon tax? Do we need a smaller rebate in order to change that consumer and industrial behavior? Well, I believe it is effective. And, and you talk about British Columbia. Yes, the overall emissions haven't gone down. But the per capita emissions have gone way down as population has increased dramatically in British Columbia. And so I would argue that it has worked. It's part of an overall climate plan. Too much, of, too much of the oxygen, I believe, in the climate debate is spent on the price on pollution, which does work, but we're also investing in green infrastructure and green energy. Um, and these are things that we have to keep moving forward on. 
Um, before I came here, I read an editorial in the Standard Sister paper, Hamilton Spectator, that talked about the Liberal plan as providing the most hope in offering the short-term plan that we talked about in terms of a price of pollution, many of the infrastructure items, but a medium-term plan in terms of getting the provinces off coal as a means to produce electricity, and a long-term plan to legislate Canada's net zero by 2050. Um, and ensure that governments have, um, and it would be mandatory to have five-year plans to ensure that we meet those targets. Um, and we've seen uh, through economists and, and stories that the Liberal plan is ambitious, but it is also feasible um, and, is a, and will provide us with a powerful tool to move forward to really help us in the fight against global climate change. I mean, governments for years have been promising action on, on climate change. And Canada, I mean, there's been this curious thing where Canada signs an international agreement on targets, and we're not the only country that's done this, and then we just fail abysmally at reaching those targets. Um, the kind of targets that you're talking about now, and you just said uh, it's, it's feasible. I think the phrase the Prime Minister used during the English language debate was it's ambitious and doable. Um, but what confidence can Canadians have that, that this government, if it's reelected, will actually hit those targets or exceed them as opposed to sort of the past behavior of this country which has been big talk but very little in terms of actually meeting uh, those international obligations. Absolutely and in terms of our Paris targets based on the actions of the past four years we're 75 percent of our way there and so in terms of and that's even factoring in uh, Trans Mountain and uh, the increase uh, carbon that will be released because of that. Um, and so we're well on our way. Um, I give an analogy to people who criticize us, well, you're not going to meet our targets. And that, that would be the same as going to a hockey game, watching the home team score three goals and saying, oh, they just won't win. And maybe if you're a Leafs fan, you have uh, understanding that that may not happen. But we're well on our way towards that goal. The actions of this government have seen that. And we understand that our climate plan isn't perfect. Um, but it is a real and serious plan. And we've made real and serious progress to this point. Um, on the affordable housing front, um, I mean, this city, particularly the downtown of this city, has seen an explosion of homelessness, of mental health uh, problems, the opioid crisis exacerbating all of this. And at the same time, there is this very easy to track reduction of not just social housing, but just generally affordable housing for you know middle income, low income uh, earners. Uh, what can or should the federal government do? to begin to address that problem because much of the debate seems to center around you know allowing developers to build more higher end uh, housing and really that kind of stock of either social or affordable housing continues to dry up yeah no and uh, there's there's a limit to what the federal government can do but the federal government needs to be an important player in the housing debate um, we've seen over the past few decades the federal government and it's both liberal and conservative abandon its uh, role in housing and we've seen that lead to some of the issues that we have right now. And so that's why, as a government, we committed to developing the first national housing strategy. Um, we then committed $40 billion over a decade to see that strategy with the goal of reducing chronic homelessness by half. Um, I use the analogy, if you want shade, the best time to plant a tree was 30 years ago. The next best time is right now. And so we've seen uh, developments in uh, St. Catharines and Welland through Niagara Regional Housing the one on Carlton Street being the first affordable housing development built in St. Catharines since I believe the 1970s. Mm. We've seen groundbreaking in um, uh, with the YWCA in terms of second stage housing. There's a lot more available and I know there's a lot of agencies looking in Niagara looking to apply to that funding and we want to help them uh, achieve, that, achieve that goal and uh, it's my role and will continue to be my role as a member of parliament to ensure that that money um, goes there and you talk about opioids and mental health yes we, and we can't really talk about any of those issues or health care reform or criminal justice reform unless we're talking about housing as the centerpiece of the solution because it all um, it all starts there and it's much cheaper to provide someone a home than deal with the consequences how, how much like how much money is in that fund that, that municipalities or, or provinces could access um, it's a it's a 40 billion dollar fund through various uh, various streams and the goal is supportive housing and it doesn't it isn't a one-size-fits-all and I've talked to different groups I was just meeting with the LGBTQ community and they said well is there an opportunity for funding for um, uh, specialized housing and I said well if the demand is there um, and there's a group willing to step up and uh, 
uh, move forward as a partner with the federal government, there will be money there, and we're more than happy to help advocate on their behalf. And I've said the same thing to veterans groups, seniors groups. Um, mm -hmm. There's opportunities. It's not a one-size-fits-all approach. One of the things that happens in elections is a lot of numbers get thrown out, a lot of percentages get thrown out. Every party says, "My pl our plan will solve this at this dollar figure for this percent. It's all a bit bewildering for folks, but the one number that, that everybody seems to agree on, at least, is uh, the, the state of the federal deficit. Um, the, the liberals are, are projecting that deficit's not going away under your current plan for some time, and at least for those who are on the sort of right of center spectrum, say this is just a terrible way to run government finances. When we're talking about whether it's affordable housing or climate change or health care, and there's these promises that the Liberal Party's making in terms of how much this is going to cost if we're going to run deficits over a period of time. Why is that the, the way to go? Why, are we, why is there less of a concern in terms of balancing the books uh, and not running deficits, which have to be paid off later? With interest rates low, with interest rates being low, now's the time to invest. And we said that four years ago that we were going to invest in people. And we can't solve the housing crisis. We can't solve issues with mental health, with opioids by cuts. And we've seen it at Queen's Park that oftentimes the cuts impact uh, the most vulnerable in our community. And we've seen that time and time again. And so as long as we're investing in things that matter, things like housing will reduce costs further down the road. We talk about all of the issues that if you build someone a home, the cost in terms of health care, criminal justice, mental health, and so on and so forth can be reduced. Um, every year we've lowered our debt to GDP ratio as the economy grows. We're in a good position and our books are the envy of our G7 allies. Um, if we look to international rating agencies, and this might be getting in the weeds too much, um, but only Germany and Canada have AAA ratings, so the international banking community looks at Canada and sees that we have a viable plan going forward. Uh, there's two questions that uh, when I announced on Twitter that we were doing these chats with the candidates, and there's two that came up that people want sort of very direct uh, and, and personal answers from. And I think the first one may be a foregone conclusion, but I have to ask it. Uh, you accept, or do you accept that human activity is exacerbating uh, climate change? Yes. And what is your personal view on women's right to choose? It is a constitutional right that should be protected and that uh, politicians in this country should, uh, should stand up to defend those rights. Thank you. And then really quickly, as we, just as we go out here, why should uh, voters give the Liberals uh, another four years? Um, we've had a real and progressive plan going forward, and I've talked about it in terms of Canadians creating 1.1 million new jobs, um, most of them full-time. Poverty, or we've exceeded our targets in terms of our poverty reduction plan, 825,000 uh, fewer people. We've had developments in terms of the Canada Child Benefit helping residents in St. Catharines. There's 17,000 kids benefiting from that. Uh, changes to old age security, guaranteed income supplement for seniors. Um, and we need to keep moving forward. Um, we have a plan for to implement Pharmacare, which I've heard at the doors is something that concerns a great number of people and having to choose between uh, paying for the rent or paying for the prescription medication. Um, having a real and serious plan on the environment. So I can look back to our four years and say um, we've, we've had a strong showing, we've done well, and um, I believe that I've personally fought hard for the people of St. Catharines and fought for those people that I wanted to stand up for four years ago but there's a great deal more work to do, and we're ready to meet that challenge. Okay, thank you very much, Chris. Thank you. Uh, you've been watching Niagara Votes 2019, and remember, on election night, October the 21st, uh, to come back to our website at 8 p.m. for our election results show, of course, after you've gone out and cast your ballot. Thanks very much.